So Island Fever season one is officially out and it was a long time coming, partly because this was a journey that I probably spent, you know, four or five years trying to develop and get to a point that actually made sense for me. Uh, and so if you really look at it, uh, Island Fever, at least the first season, it's a mix of three different projects that I combined together to create something that I think really works as a start, starting point and a launching point for the whole season as a whole. In many ways, it is a combination of the AR demo that I originally had, which was actually the first eight pages of a graphic novel that I envisioned, uh, introducing the main character, Roscoe, to everybody. Uh, and quite frankly, to even get it to the point that it is now, where it's in full color and everything, that was a journey and a feat in and of itself. And I think that the augmented reality adventures and the actual season one of Island Fever, they have very parallel journeys, partly because they exist as their own different things. Uh, they have their own experiences to it, right? Like Island Fever AR, the AR demo, it comes to life. Whereas the season one, it introduces you to the character and it really archives the journey that I had as a comic artist from start to finish. And so with it, you see pretty much the world building aspect of what the world of Viltopia is in the first season and you get introduced to the main characters of it. But then you branch off into a different style of storytelling that encapsulates chapters two and three. And then after that, you get a little bit of an archive, an anthology of my actual newspaper comics. And the newspaper comics are really my origin story because it starts off showing the first initial comics that I made that were actually a comic series or web series that I got published in newspapers back when I was at the University of Hawaii called Stuck on an Island. And it was just based off of my blog that I started back in 2011. And then you see the evolution from what it was with Stuck on an Island that I was doing in Hawaii, then to move on to the newspaper comics that I was doing at Oregon State when I was uh, writing and cartooning for the barometer. And then moving on to when I moved on to Portland State, which I was able to get published again in the newspaper in the, the Portland State Vanguard. And you start to see the evolution from uh, particularly TJ, who was the main character in Petrie. Those are the main characters that I was focusing on in Stuck on an Island. And then seeing how those uh, characters have evolved in terms of style and in terms of, you know, complexity of uh, conversations and storytelling that I was doing within those newspaper comics. And then you get to see the evolution from the Vanguard to when I was getting published in the Willamette Weekly. And all of those things combined to uh, show a, a evolution of me as a storyteller uh, more than anything else. Uh, I like to think of Island Fever season one as a uh, very much a diary of where I was at as a creator through a, a period of self-exploration. And one of the reasons why I wanted to create season one partly was inspired by my teachers at Portland State. Um, I was, as I was working on my, uh, my post back for trying to get into medical school, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't plan this, but I ended up finding out that Portland State was the home of a comic studies program. And I didn't realize that Portland was a, a hub for comic artists. Uh, and, and it really worked out for me because uh, as I was trying to figure out my rigorous schedule of taking biology, you know, physics, organic chemistry, biochem, all those different things, I didn't want to overload myself and I needed to find a creative outlet. And so that creative outlet ended up allowing me to take animation courses, um, to balance out my schedule so that it wasn't too like science heavy and demanding, but also taking uh, comic writing and uh, 
comic comic making comic studies courses and two of the uh two of my instructors that you know hands down were my favorite instructors at uh portland state were uh, brian michael bendis and david walker obviously with the success of spider-man and uh, spider-man into the spider-verse and and miles morales and then also the success of luke cage and cyborg and uh bitter root and all those different things um you know those those two those two creators individuals comic writers uh you know they were they were influential in my evolution of being able to understand how to write comics understand the power of uh, visual storytelling and understand the the power of being able to create pages upon pages of story that tells the journeys of these characters and through the amount of pages that you're able to amount as a creator that shows how uh, powerful your storytelling can be you know i i i think one of the big inspirations that i drew from brian and i drew from david was that even though they were making they were teaching us right like they were teaching us uh the tools of the trade and how to navigate it they were also creating themselves they were balancing having multiple book projects right and you know i remember hearing stories whenever they would have people like kelly sudaconic or matt fraction or you know a variety of different industry vets that like we all sort of revere for their work um you know they would always uh the guests would always mention just the work ethic that they they had and that was really inspiring for me seeing them every single week and talking to them and being able to to share my ideas and, and the things that i want to do uh to aspire to be you know have the same impact that they did literally chapters two and three from Island Fever season one, where the project that I did in that class, uh, because we had a class project of being able to write and uh, and create a comic, um, because it was a comic writing class, right? And so what better way to learn than to actually create the stuff? And so I had, you know, chapter one already sort of made, kind of, uh, and, I wanted to use the intellectual property that I developed when I was, you know, writing for the newspapers. Uh, and I wanted to build a world around it and, and actually have that journey take off. And so I ended up doing that. So with chapters two and chapters three, they weren't originally called chapters two and chapters three, but they were um, they were a part of a project that I, I did for uh, Brian and David's class. And after I did that, being able to go through the experience of writing a comic and then illustrating it and then being able to uh, have the interplay of uh, translating the words to images and then have those things actually tell the story without having to explain it. You're really just showing the story and showing the events play out in the pages rather than uh, being expositional. And, you know, playing around with narratives and playing around with uh, different character dynamics. Uh, I was able to try to explore that stuff in those two chapters and ultimately craft a narrative that actually worked and that I was proud of. And ultimately, I ended up getting a A in that class, which was great because uh, with medical school, you want to be able to get as many A's as possible and uh, balancing out the rigorous schedule of a uh, pre-med student with, you know, being a cartoonist already and then, you know, working on this project here, uh, it, it really allowed for me to do that and really flex my skills in, in ways and grow from it in ways that really mattered. And so after I did that, I thought, okay, I have this, you know, cohesive chapter that worked for me. And, you know, it, it was a, a culmination of, of, you know, weeks upon weeks upon weeks of, of effort of working to write it. And I wanted to get that out there. And so then I thought, okay, why don't I like actually make a book, make the first iteration of it. But I understood that like, you know, if I, if I have a book, I want to be able to have a substantial amount of pages. And, you know, I, I sort of pulled from my uh, inspiration, which was uh, Aaron Magruder and the Boondocks. And so I have pretty much, I've had all of the uh, Boondocks books 
which are in many ways just republishings of the stuff that he did in the comics. And I really thought back to, you know, one of the things that really inspired me from uh, Aaron Magruder was that, you know, he, he started off with the newspapers and uh, as he was consistent with the newspapers, he was able to tell stories uh, across comic strips. And being able to tell stories across comic strips, he was able to uh, craft out these narratives and, and build these character dynamics that you sort of look forward to with every comic strip that he played, played with. And then after a while, you realize that if you're getting published every, you know, every day of the week or, you know, multiple times a week, then after five or six months, you're going to have a substantial amount of uh, content that you can repackage. And so looking at looking at these books, looking at um, all of these, this is like, you know, a couple of works, months worth of stuff. And so I started to look back at just all the old files that I had. And I was like, okay, if I was getting published, you know, three to four times a week, and I've been doing that for years, then how much of the actual content do I actually have for these characters? And what can I do to uh, actually craft a book that was very similar to uh, the Boondocks? And so very much like my journey has been, it has really been focused on, you know, recreating what the Boondocks uh, was from Aaron Magruder. And I remember going back to 2011 when I first got started, you know, after I had hip surgery and after I ended up, you know, trying to explore the, the animation and comics realm, what I wanted to do was find a way to do what Aaron McGritter did with the boondocks with my own intellectual property. And I wanted to create something that allowed me to explore my creativity and really find myself and find myself in this way that was unique to me because I was at a, you know, in, in one way or another, I was in this point in my life where I had an identity crisis. I didn't know who I was outside of being a football player. And through that, uh, it allowed me to, you know, learn how to draw. It allowed me to learn how to write. It allowed me to do all those different things and, and understand how to channel my frustrations, channel my uh, my energy that I would normally put towards football into something that is creative and, and a healthy outlet for me. And in many ways, it really became this like diary and this journey of self-exploration that I'm really proud of. And so when I had this idea, I essentially looked online and was just like, how did Aaron Magruder start the boondocks? And I remember I had all these books and I've had these since like high school. These is when I got these. I got these in high school because these were the only things that I actually read if I ever read books. Um, and so I ended up going to uh, essentially like a Wiki, like an earlier version of Wikipedia. And I saw that Aaron Magruder, he started off with, you know, the newspaper comic in the at a school newspaper. And then he started doing that for, you know, years and then ended up getting syndicated. And then after it started getting syndicated, then he would republish those uh, newspaper comics into books, into just sort of anthologies. And then after he did that, then he started to have a web series and uh, called the Super Rumble Mix Show. Uh, and that's when I got introduced to Tube Steak and I got introduced to Carl Jones. And then from there, he was able to get the boondocks optioned and, you know, the rest was history after that. And so in my mind, I was just like, I'm going to literally just do what he did. And so, you know, once I started to get into the newspaper and with one of the, uh, I actually have the first comics that I actually made to pitch to the newspaper in the uh, first section of, you know, the moment in Utopia, which is like the third part of season one, uh, after the, uh, after the AR demo, and then after, uh, chapters two and three, which are my, uh, projects for David and, uh, Brian's class, then, you know, it goes into the a Moments in Utopia, which is the, uh, anthology of me being a cartoonist for, uh, the, 
uh, Hawaii newspaper, uh, the Oregon State newspaper, the Portland State newspaper, and then the Willamette Weekly newspaper. And being able to just show that evolution and show how the characters evolve and, and the art style evolves, it, it, it's, it's, it's really great to me to just sort of look back at that evolution of me coming back to it, especially because now that I'm in medical school, I had to leave my position with the Willamette newspaper uh, because I wasn't able to to keep up with the demands of being able to get published, you know, one to three times a week. And so I essentially lost my spot to, you know, to the demands of being a medical student and having uh, weekly updates and deadlines. And so I, I say all that because, you know, like season one, it, it captures so much of my history and my journey in, in these pages. And because it captures so much of my history, it, it's, you get to see, you know, many aspects of me and where I was at creatively and how I was able to express myself in the different styles that I chose to explore. Because, you know, the evolution of this is really what you see now where I'm doing animated stuff, I'm doing augmented reality stuff. But it all started from, you know, the evolution of this. And so fun fact, you know, the cover is augmented and the first eight pages is augmented because the first eight pages is just the uh, black and white version of the AR demo. And so eventually I'll be able to actually augment the whole book and have the whole book series augmented and have voiceovers and all that stuff. And, and that's going to be my goal. But, you know, I got to start, you got to start some, somewhere, right? And so... Uh, again, season one, uh, Big City, Small Dreams is a journey that I'm super proud of and it is available in print and I hope that people enjoy it because, you know, I, I was able to find ways to create and uh, channel my, my experiences into things and characters that uh, I'm really proud of and you know, it's it's it, it was always it was always to re recreate my version of the Boondocks, and I think that I have, you know, use use my talents and use my energy and my time to uh, to get at least close to that, and that's something that I'm really proud of. And so, if you're ever so inclined, please, 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 uh, feel free to uh, get yourself a copy. Uh, it's available on Amazon. It's available on shop.iltopia.com. And I hope that this inspires you to um, explore your own creativity. And I hope that it inspires you to, uh, you know, read more in my series and share it with your friends and, uh, and any of that stuff, because it is, um, you know, it's a, it's a passion for me that I, I really care about. And, you know, if you've followed any of my work, you understand or, or you know how uh, important reading is to me, no matter the, the no matter the format. But really, reading from books and finishing a book cover to cover, uh, that is a that is a very powerful uh, experience and endeavor that I don't feel many people get to enjoy and appreciate. And many people that do read a lot of books, they take it for granted what the impact that is. Because I could tell you right now that uh, I became a better reader once I started making and writing and reading books. And when I started to do that, I actually became a better reader and it actually changed my life because I wouldn't have gotten into medical school if I didn't do well on the MCAT. And I did well on the MCAT once I became a better reader because the majority of the test is reading comprehension. And so by creating books and writing books and reading books and, and, and finishing books from cover to cover, you know, I thought that I was going to do well in the sciences to, to bump up my scores on the MCAT, but really my highest score was my reading comprehension. And then what came secondary was my physics and my chemistry scores. And so, you know, I am a testament to my, my journey in medicine is a testament to the power of reading. And being able to read stuff um, is, you know, and comprehend it and remember it and internalize it and understand it uh, and utilize the information from that reading 
into your daily life. Like that is that is something that I have grown to benefit from uh, immensely uh, in my journey as a creator and as a healthcare professional. And so I say all that to say, um, you know, get the book, please support me. Um, and I hope to just share a little bit more of my journey as I, as I continue with, um, with this, uh, as we continue. And so, uh, without further ado, you know, that's that.